Who has an Android phone? You want a free charger? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> is it one of the new Type C ones or the old micro ones? I don't know. It's by this company Blue that makes tablets. Is it a micro USB? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the typical Android charger. Did you say it's like Android? Android. Android. No, Blue. Oh, I don't know an Android phone, but they charge portable chargers. So they use a tablet so that you can monitor and run that device in the truck. Uh, but they hardwire it in. And the company they buy their tablets from. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So they basically bring these things over. Like, uh, I wish they did. I have yeah, like, yeah. a license. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. yeah. We call this swag. We do have stickers. Remind me. I'm going to put it up to you. Remind me again, and I'll go grab them. We got Star the News. We got Star KC. What are they? Stickers. Oh, stickers. They have Kuzma, but they're not in yet. Cool. All right. So, a couple of housekeeping things, and then we'll just jump right into this. We got awesome entrepreneurs ready to answer. Uh, okay, so if you want to get on the Wi-Fi, the password's up there. Uh, the, the Wi-Fi network and password. It is on Google Fiber, so you'll be speeding along. Click, click. Uh, social media, we've got three handles. Casey started at the end. Casey is beating the Village SQ. If you guys tweet, uh, does anyone here tweet? Is that a, hey, yeah. Wow, okay. <laughs> it doesn't seem like a younger generation thing. Really? Right. I don't know. You I guys do tweet? tweet? Yeah, but like, sometimes. Oh, most of my friends do. Really? I, just, yeah. I thought it was all Snapchat. It is. Yeah, that's true. It's Snapchat, yeah. Instagram, and Twitter. You know? Really? Yeah. Facebook's out. Yeah, no, Facebook's out. Facebook's, Facebook's out. out. Dead. Yeah. Mark. Facebook's all the parents. If I want to communicate about family reunion, I go to Facebook. Really? Yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. We can talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the hashtag then, since you do Instagram and, uh, and Twitter, tweet, I guess. Uh, startup KC, hashtag Startup KC. And use that anytime you're doing any startup stuff. That's like how we all track what people are talking about, like just in the community overall, not just the community. Uh, okay, so uh, not now, but after you've given me the tour, we're doing the panel. At some point, I'm going to share with Jenna um, the photos of the tour, the video that we're taking now, and a survey, uh, which is basically to hear back from you all uh, what you thought about the tour, the panel, what we did right, what we did wrong. It's really, if you could just take the time to fill it out, I know surveys suck, and most people but it really helps us out and lets us know what you guys think and then we can improve and, and, and use it efficiently. Um, okay, so that's all. The other thing I'll just say is uh, we talked about the village, cool part of town, you know, the, the part of the community, the part of the larger Startup KC community. Um, the Kansas City Startup Foundation emerged from the efforts of the village. It is a nonprofit, that's who I work with. Uh, and we essentially exist to make Kansas City startup community that we talked about as awesome as possible. So, we all know about Silicon Valley, right? Cool, awesome things happening out there. I mean, for the most part, they're having their own situations. Um, but, you know, they obviously had a lot of prosperity, a lot of the successful startups. Uh, we want similar things in Kansas City, but in order to get that, you can't just rely on hopes and dreams. You have to get intentional about creating an environment where um, students, where all these, all these stakeholders, government, corporations, investors, entrepreneurs, of course, um, even, even other nonprofits, have the ability to interact with one another and create that community where everyone can be successful. Uh, and that's what we exist to do. So uh, we have a lot of resources. I'll share with you those things later. But uh, let's get that plugged in. Okay, without further ado, let, let's meet our entrepreneurs. So um, why don't you guys, we've got Larissa, Joey, and Kyle. Um, why don't you introduce yourselves and then just talk briefly about what you're working on and, and then we'll get into questions. Ladies first. <laughs> uh, so I am Larissa Uretti, and I run a web development and digital strategy company called Memory Consultants. Um, I've been doing that about two years, and through that, I've had some cool opportunities to work with some different types of clients. So I've got a neurobiologist that we are still working with to try and get a concussion prevention sensor going, uh, which has been super interesting, especially given the new like NFL findings and they're pulling out of the concussion uh, research study that they were initially part of. So. Lots of interesting things in that market. Um, working with a lot of small businesses. 
got tapped to help with a group in St. Louis called Plain Academy that uh, does like, it's a coding boot camp, but they're launching a new veteran uh, specific nine week program that's gonna lead to an apprenticeship, so I'm gonna help them manage and network and do some business development for them. So that's kind of been a crazy couple of weeks, but <laughs> that's what I do. I'm Joey Kramer, I'm one of the founders with my wife, April, uh, with Apple Pie Painting. And we get people together to show them a good time and teach them how to create artwork. We bring it directly mobile to you, whether it's in your school, home, business, you name it, any event, we can handle it. Fundraisers, uh, corporate team building. Uh, currently, right now, we're going through Scale Up KC and we're kind of putting all the pieces together so we can launch our national franchising model, hopefully beginning the next year, and we're getting ready to roll out next month our new and updated subscription model for in-home painting kits that we ship anywhere in the world, and hopefully get our recurring revenues going there. Going. So it's baby steps. I'm Kyle Claypool. Uh, I've got kind of two different businesses. Uh, my first was uh, Larissa, I come from kind of a web development background, so I started building websites in college, uh, ended up starting a digital agency, and we do everything from building websites to the, the sort of overarching digital strategy for how to take a business and help them scale and grow online. Uh, that has kind of allowed me to start my second business, which is Lifted Spirits Distillery. Uh, we're down at the crossroads. Uh, we make vodka, gin, whiskey, and other spirits from scratch, uh, from grain that's grown down in Wellsville, Kansas. And uh, so in addition to that, we've got a, a bar and an event space. We do a lot of uh, private events and, and events open to the public and, and that sort of thing. You could keep half a Kansas City Entrepreneurs going just with the vodka. Yeah, yeah we could. You brought us samples, right? I it's did. It's a requirement. That would be wrong. We would not do that. Yep. So I've got a list of questions here just like to ask in general, uh, but this is all about you guys and what you want to learn about. Um, and just so you guys know, they're with the um, Young Entrepreneurs Program, program for Kansas City. Kansas City. Uh, and essentially they get paired with um, large, relatively large startups uh, that are doing good things um, to just be a part of building a startup and understanding and learning and contributing. Uh, and Sandy Kemper uh, was instrumental in getting this CTFO, we got Bloom, I Verify, Digital Innovations, and Indeed. Go Indigo Wild. Indigo Wild. Awesome. There you go. Cool. So, again, raise your hand if you have a question because it's all about me. But I'm going to start us off because this is the one I always love the most. Um, so, you're all entrepreneurs. We, are, I mean, we hear about entrepreneurship. I know firsthand, I know you guys know it firsthand, it's really challenging. Uh, but you've decided to become entrepreneurs, right or for wrong, but you're doing it, why? What is your why for being an entrepreneur? Go. Anyone who can speak up. Good. Uh, I have always been just completely wired that way. Uh, I mean, even back in like elementary school, I was uh, you know, selling things to friends on the playground. Uh, when those first statement quarters came out, I would get rolls from the bank like the day they came out, and then I'd sell the quarters for a dollar, and people actually bought them, which really always amused me. Uh, so then, like going into high school, I started building computers and selling those to friends who wanted custom gaming computers but couldn't figure out how to do it. So I built computers and I sold those. It's just kind of always been in my DNA. Um, you know, my, my dad has pretty much always been self-employed. Uh, both my grandfathers ran their own businesses and whatnot, so it's kind of the atmosphere I was raised in. Um, I'm also one of those, you know, 
super smart kids who uh, doesn't always do well with authority because I tell them they're wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I felt like the, the best path forward was to, to, to be the one calling the shots and uh, mm -hmm. to set the vision and then, you know, outwork everybody else until I got there. That's an entrepreneur by definition. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Start to yeah. in your blood. Cool. Yeah. Well, similar to Kyla was shoveling snow, mowing yards, sweeping Two. lots from yeah. the age of, I think, nine, ten years old. And I always loved being on my own, making money. I started my first company at 28 and just been going ever since. And, you know, I just, I feel like, that's what I'm passionate about. Sitting behind a desk all day working for somebody else is not my idea of the American lifestyle. I mean, we can do whatever we want to do, and it's awesome that you guys are here because it gives us hope that the next generation coming is going to keep this trend going because there's so many people that just get, they listen to the media, and listen to go to school, get a job, do this, and don't have to do that. If you're passionate and you want to create something and you want to go out and do it, jump off the cliff and go. But it's hard as hell. <laughs> and it's scary and it sucks more than it's good. But eventually, the good starts outweighing the suckiness. And it just One of my favorite quotes is, uh, it's the best $5 an hour job you'll ever have. Yeah. <laughs> if you can pay yourself. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Who said that? I got it down. I don't remember. Okay. Awesome. Anonymous. <laughs> Um, so I, you'll, you'll probably notice a little bit of a trend. I also grew up in a, I mean, my dad was ran his own company for a long time, and I actually just grew up working in his in his office, right? I got to see some of the struggles, but also got to kind of get that sense of, of what it meant to employ people and have, um, you know, a, a community and a company that would work for you and with you. Um, and I'm also pretty stubborn, um, and you know, had tried my hand at Sprint and all these different places that just really wanted you to sit there and do this thing that they told you to do, even if it Yes, and completely inefficient. Um, and I was like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, why are we not solving the problem instead of just like continuing down this path of crappy processes? And they were like, yeah, that's cool. We can talk to you. Um, so, so I, I have always sort of had the, the idea that like, if I can't find someone to do it with me, then I'll just do it myself. Like, screw it. And that's kind of how I ended up here. Um, I also had. Uh, an epiphany that I wanted to start collecting skills that I could take with me because I don't want to live in one place. I don't want to. I don't care about mortgages and kids and houses and all the stuff that's supposed to mean you're successful. If that's not how I define it, and I never have. And so I figured the more portable that my skills were, the better off I would be at being able to always make it. Um, and, and having your own company and being willing to network, you know, nationally, internationally, whatever, um, is is sort of right in line with that. And so, plus I'm just a loud mouth. Um, and it sucks, he's right, I mean it does, it sucks. Uh, but every time you get burned, you just have to like pivot and 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 learn from it. So like, all right, never, like now there's a new clause in my contract, like never going to do that again. Um, <laughs> so, you know, like that's every not. Every day is a learning experience. <laughs> yeah. You go, really? How did I get here? Uh, but yeah, so I think, I think that's, it's, it's enjoyable, um, and it's hard, and it's frustrating, but at the same time, it's better than, Stuff instead of trying to you know, justify to my boss why I'm not sitting at my desk every five minutes, right? So, yeah. Where are you going? <laughs> Question in the back. Um, I think you all talked about the difficulties of being an entrepreneur, so what has been the most difficult part or like situation that you've been in? How long do we have for this? <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh... well, I was just going to say, you know, if you like to sleep, if you like hanging out with friends, like hanging out with your family, if you like having free time to do whatever you want to do, watch TV, screw off, then this isn't a life for you. Because if you're not grinding 18 hours, 19 hours a day, I've been up since 5.15 this morning, and I'll probably be up till midnight at least tonight, and it's go, go, go. You don't have time to do anything but build and focus on your dream until it becomes a reality. That's the that's the most difficult part I deal with, but I love what I do so much. I don't care that I'm not out doing all 
all the stuff that everybody else would. I think I can answer the question two ways. One, he's certainly at the point where, like, that's probably the hardest thing you have to face is, is not just the time and effort, but like being able to, to remind yourself that like you still matter as a person and that you're not gonna be any good to this company that you're trying to build if you are burnt out, right? So I mean, that's definitely something that I am, you know, even currently just dealing with is like, man, there is so much to do to actually grow a company. Like, you have to get all the crap that's in your head and all the assumptions that you can make on the fly out and on the paper and getting that, you know, building some sort of a process and a system so that you can actually hand it off to someone so that they can help you because you can't ask for help if you don't know how to, if you don't know what you do every day, right? If you can't organize your thoughts. And so that's something that I'm going through currently um, because I need to bring someone else on, but I kind of can't um, until I get that stuff done. And then um, just, I mean, at the end of the day, you're working with people and, and when you're small, it's really easy for boundaries to disappear because you really want to deliver and you want to do, you know, better than your competition. But then what that leads to is getting your phone blown up at 11 o'clock at night because they don't understand that you're actually a good company. And, and so it can be really hard to manage those expectations, not let people down, but still hold on to like who you are as an entity and, and take yourself out of that freelancer, like I'm just here to work for you like a slave mentality because you're not gonna get anywhere doing that either. So um, I think boundaries and then really getting serious about processes and recognizing like what you do Yeah, I think for me, one of the big challenges has been those, in any of my companies, those first handful of hires. Uh, you will probably never find somebody who's as passionate and as committed to your vision as you are. Uh, you just have to hope you don't get those people who are just looking for a paycheck and a job. Uh, because they're, you know, they're not going to bring the the effort, the attention to detail, the passion, the excitement, the vision that will help you grow. So, um, you know, finding people who come to you because they they are excited about what you do and how you do it, and then having the systems and the processes to make them successful while still running the business and doing all the other stuff that you were trying to do before uh, is a real challenge. So, especially with those first couple hires, it's usually because you're working that 80 to 90 hours a week, and you're like, well, this probably isn't going to be a long-term solution, and eventually you, you make that hire, and then you've got to work 100 hours a week to give them 20 hours a week to get up to speed before you can then start stepping down to 60 or 70 hours and move on to those bigger things, and then uh, if that person turns out to not be a fit or, you know, uh, had some people that just ghosted. They were just no call, no show, disappeared, never to be heard from again. So never the answer. Ne just yeah. tell us you don't want to work. Like yes. it's okay. Like just call in. Exactly. <laughs> like never do that to a job. Yep. Because <laughs> uh, you know I've had some people uh, say you know they called and said you know I decided this isn't for me. I'm pursuing my passion over here. And I wrote the most glowing recommendations for them. Help them get their next job and introduce them to people in my network. And I had other people who just completely disappeared. And then somebody, you know, called to for a reference. Right. I was like, well, let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> so, who do you think got the job? Yeah. So, yeah, just real quick, I'm just going to chime in this because I think what Joey said is it's an important piece, right? Um, in my mind, the most challenging thing is work-life balance, right? There's 24 hours in a day. Um, when you're a founding entrepreneur and you're leading the ship, right, no matter how big the ship is, it's all on those shoulders, or at least your shoulders and your co-founder's shoulders, right? You've got to work all the time, and you've got to learn so many things, legal, marketing, accounting, all these things that you never really cared about or really wanted to do. You just wanted to build your idea. Well, guess what? If you build a business, it's on your shoulders. Um, I do this, uh, I came up with this kind of mindset um, called the professional life matrix. Uh, and it kind of talks about, in my mind, the four areas of professional life that you can be in. So you can be an employee, right? And there's, and there's benefits to each of these things. There's really not a right or wrong, um, but you can be an employee. So literally, you're just nine to five, working, getting it done, and you have your own time. Uh, then you have entrepreneurship, right? So 
Sometimes the corporation will give you a little leeway and say, hey, go be creative, think outside the box. We're still gonna make your paycheck, but you get a little bit of freedom, so that's kind of cool. Uh, and then you can be a, a participant in a, a startup, so like a, a builder, so to speak. So you're still in the hustle and grind, but it's not on all your shoulders. And then you can, of course, be the next step, which is a co-founding entrepreneur leader. Um, again, no right or wrong, everything's great, but you do have to be aware of that work-life balance because it is the ultimate struggle. I mean, entrepreneurs have offed themselves, like literally said, I can't, can't hack this anymore. And it's a sad thing, right? But the demands and the struggles are so prevalent that just want to be aware of that uh, going into it, and that's just something. And something that helps with that, the first year, two years, that's all it is. But as you grow and build your processes, you don't have anything until you have your processes. So it's replicable, so you can teach it to somebody. Yeah. It's all on your shoulders. Once you build those processes, once you put, you know, shift this chore here, this mm -hmm. task here, and you have people that can help you, now we're no longer working in the business 24 hours a day, we're working on growing the business. My whole focus anymore with our company is, I actually don't do much of anything day to day. My wife's got all the processes down and she runs it day to day, and my whole job now is to get out and grow and get in front of people and expand the business. Yeah, I've been able to get my, my first business, the marketing business, grow digitally I've got a team that I've hired up, I've trained up, and I'm totally confident in them, that I can check in with them for five to eight hours a week, and they take care of the clients, they take care of the work, and then you know I go out and I meet with clients and sell projects once in a while, but you know if I were smart, I'd just work 10 hours a week and not have this other business where all my money goes. <laughs> 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 but then my money would be our good business. Yeah, we really need to do this. It's a call, yeah. So you had a question now? Yeah, my question was, uh, along the lines of work life balance, do each of you have like a key tip that you can offer to avoid that burnout everyone talks about? Mine has been to just say no, like just be willing to lose the client. And it sounds like shitty customer service, but they're not always right. And at the end of the day, like, like I'm not gonna answer my phone for you outside of certain hours. And I will absolutely chew your butt if you demand that I do. I mean, it's not worth it to me. Like, because at the end of the like, because otherwise, what, what's the difference, right? I mean, what's the difference between being a rat in a cage at a, at a corporation or being a rat in your own cage that you built, you know? It's <laughs> so like, um, and, and it's really hard when you're like, I'm making no money. Like, you are in politics, like, but I don't want to cultivate that kind of client relationship anyway because it's it's not my business, you know? And, um, and they're not, at the end of the day, they're not going to help you grow your company because they're just going to take from you, right? And so it's, it's being willing to kind of burn the babies isn't a good fit, and you can be really professional and do it, right? It's so different than calling in the job and saying, like, I'm not sure that this is a good relationship. You know, I think your needs are bigger than what I can provide based on, you know, the way I'm going to run my business. Here are your options. I've got some recommendations for you. You know, you can send them off to a company that's larger and just be willing to walk away from it um, because otherwise you will just literally never, you will never gain the confidence in what you're doing to, to not take on people. What's helped me in work-life balance is my entire day, seven days a week, from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed is structured minute by minute almost. I mean, I know what time I'm getting up, I'm going to the gym, I know when I'm eating for breakfast, I know when I take a protein shake. And I mean, it's just all these little so anal retentive things, but it creates hours in my day that all of a sudden, I can spend 30 minutes or an hour with my wife at the end of the night and shut it down. I mean, I give up things like TV. I bet I've watched 10 hours of TV in the last <laughs> month, but I don't care to watch it. I'm, I'm listening to books. I'm working on processes and building stuff that I love to do. But it's having that structure. If you're not structured, then you, you don't realize how many minutes and hours every day just oh, away. Wow. Yeah. It's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And then you just get those habits going. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, I was going to say pretty much the same thing. You've got to be intentional about it. Um, if it's a priority to you, then you know, carve out that two hours on the calendar and say, I've got this scheduled and nobody can touch that. Um, you know, you pick your, your few blocks throughout the week, 
uh, and that's sacred time. That's you know whether it's to, to go to the gym or it's to you know go out with friends. You put it on the calendar and you protect it. Because gotcha. otherwise the work will fill the gaps. And, and I got always like a show. one night a week, one night a month. I go out with friends. And it's all my schedule. I have. 10 minute blocks throughout the week to call my mom, to call my friend, <laughs> to call this person, to call that person. Because if I don't, I'll forget to do it, yeah. and then I stress out. Mm -hmm. So if I know it's there, like I said, it's anal retentive, but I function, I function very well, and I can do it all the time. Yeah. And we have a star system, I mean, literally, like, just because I'm not a numbers person at the end of the day. And so I'm like, I actually have to find our series. Um, but uh, so we drew it out on paper, and it was like, here's all the things that I think are important, right? And it's like, okay, so no more consultants has a bucket, and then you know my art studio has a has a has a box and everything. And you go through, and I assigned value, you know, to them, and then broke it out by percentages and said like, so what does that actually look like in a week, right? And we offered, you know, let's say we take weekends off because that's obviously going to get filled, but it's overflow, and you know, you really look at it, it's a lot of time in a day, right? or Facebook or whatever, that time just evaporates from you. So staying diligent with like, I've got eight hours this week to work on business development. If I spend 10, then where does that two hours come out of, right? So. And just real quick, it's funny you ask that question. I ask that one all the time because work-life balance seems to be such a struggle. So when I go to a speaker event and there's someone on stage and they're allowed to ask questions, I ask that. And usually the response is they laugh and they go, oh, if you figure it out, let me know because I'm still here. Uh, so these are all good tips. I love the structured one. Um, so for me, it's uh, you gotta go to the gym. Find the outlet to burn off this, this steam. Like sweat it out. Markets. Like run, <laughs> yoga, whatever it is. Like get out there and just <laughs> find that disconnect. And for me, I'm a big fan of the 20 minute power nap. It's huge. Yeah. Uh, and it's disconnecting when you do it. Like my phone goes into uh, do not disturb mode. Mm -hmm. My smartwatch off. So literally, I, as soon as I do those two things, it's like. Yeah. The digital leash is cut off. Oh, oh, it's like yeah, the next 20 yeah, minutes, it's my time, and no one can budge me. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. I love it. So, go to the gym. Okay, you all kind of mentioned the mindset that, like, I can do it better was something that drove you to, you know, be an entrepreneur. But how do you differentiate between an idea that is something that would probably just make, like, an already successful company better and something that is like, oh, I can start my own company off? I mean, that's a, like, that's a great point, because I think a lot of us at this point are kind of building a better mousetrap, meaning that like, there's a lot of digital marketing companies in the world, right? I'm not necessarily doing it better than he is, but I'm offering a, maybe, I, like, for me, it's pursuing a different niche, because I grew up in an engineering world with my dad, and it turns out that no one can talk to those people. They hate marketing companies, they hate jargon, they don't get it, they, they have all sorts of assumptions and stereotypes about that, and you can go in and be like, no, I actually understand the words you're saying, and, and have this, you know, and I can bridge a gap between the developers and me and what I think that their business needs and, and break that down. Like that was something that I was like, oh, no one is serving you guys. Um, but I mean, to, to your point, <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. Like how do you know you actually have something novel that's worth pursuing? And I think that's the difference between like being a business owner that is starting and having a startup. Like a startup is like, I mean, what I verify did was fundamentally different in the market, right? What I'm doing is not fundamentally different in the market. It doesn't necessarily make it a different experience, but it makes it, a, it that, that mindset is, is different. I'm not gonna go pursue funding, you know, for running my digital company, right? Like, I'm gonna go find my clients, you know, but, um, but yeah, I think, I think it's just recognizing that what you're doing is maybe not gonna change the, the world, but that you can change a smaller portion of a niche market or like recognize that you have a value I would say um, a lot of startups come from people who were in a, a company. They saw things that this is dysfunctional, this is not efficient, this is weird, this is frustrating. And uh, depending on the company and the corporate culture, uh, they might be able to affect that change within the business and you know make a real difference in the company. Or they might find that, no, this is just the way we do it here. Uh, Thanks for your suggestion. Now get back to work, or um, you know. So some companies are very entrepreneurial. They are very excited about employees taking an 
initiative and uh, you know trying to, to improve processes and systems and whatnot. And the companies that aren't wired that way tend to have a lot of uh, their best talent then leave and say, you know what, I tried to fix it here, but instead I'm going to go fix it and show you you were wrong. Yeah. And then it's, you know, with a chip on your shoulder, I can do this better. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then part of it's just, you know, how you're wired and if you want to be beholden to, to the bigger company or, or figure it out for yourself. I think as entrepreneurs, you know, we're the dreamers, we're the creators without us nothing would get better, you know, whether you're doing something on a small scale or worldwide scale, you know, you have to at least have that vision, that dream, and try it. If it's, you know, if, if you can sell what you're doing, awesome, but just jump off and start trying it. You're not too young to have an idea and a product and just see if it works. If it works, what you're going to find is as you're building and developing it, it's going to grow from something that's good. You're gonna see one little thing about that idea you have that's a little tweak on what's out there and go in that direction and some test it, see if you know, that's something that people want. And if it is, keep running with it. And we started with just the idea of, well, why is everybody going to painting studios when we can bring it directly to you for your specific group in an intimate setting? Well, now we've got we're developing our own software for the entire uh, the entire industry, basically, but it's going to be our software. And then we're developing painting kits that nobody else has that we can ship worldwide. And it's just one one idea leads to another, which leads to another, right. and it just compiles on itself. And it might be the tenth idea before you hit it. It's like ah, that's the jackpot. That's the actual but, startup in the in yeah. all of this, but until you're out there talking to people and, you know, trying it and going through, you know, this sort of process building and all that kind of stuff, like, you may not even recognize it, right? But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, that's how Sprint ends up with really an efficient process because they don't, they don't, they don't have the, they're, they're physically in, incapable, like, they, they're too big, right, to stop everything and let someone innovate a new idea, but then ironically enough, I mean, I know a guy who was super fed up with a company that he'd been working with and all the money they were spending on Salesforce. So he went and wrote his own uh, interfacing plugins and pieces to fit in Salesforce for like a third of the price and has started his own company doing that, selling it back to the company he was working with yeah. when they wouldn't pay him to do it in house. Give me his right? information, please. Yeah, that's great. Yes, wow. We're working with Salesforce on others. Yeah, he's awesome. And he's got, and he's got a, you know, he, he's, I mean, he was one of the first guys that I was working with as an entrepreneur and marketer. I mean, he's, he's brilliant. So I rarely chime in, I usually just moderate, but if you guys are asking such good questions, I'm just going to throw it out. Uh, so one, get a notebook or do it on your phone, write down every idea that you have, right? If something comes across, just jot it down. It might be nothing, but at least you have an ideas thing going, you might come back to it later. Um, two, do your research, right? If you come up with ideas, don't just run out and launch something. I mean, when you do, you do it from a lean perspective, I'll get to that in a second, but go research. That's, that's just time. And thankfully, we have this thing called the internet, it's the World Wide Web, you can find out a lot of information. Go see who's doing it already, how they're doing it, see if you can find a way of doing it differently. Is there um, if you decide to jump for it, do the Lean Startup methodology. There's a book called Lean Startup, you might have read it, if you not, it's a great way to approach, kind of like Joey said, try it out, test out, see how it goes, whatever might happen. And finally, I'll say this, if you're gonna start something, um, it's, a, it's, it's a very little likelihood you're gonna start something, it's gonna be a wild success overnight, you're gonna sell it for big money in a year or six months or something, right? Likely you're signing up the next three to five years minimum to build this thing and grow it. So realize that it's not just that, oh, I wanna do something for a month, it's I wanna do something for the next long time of my life. And then selling your soul into it, more or less. Day so, in, day just, out. Yeah, just keep. Have that work-life balance and how you identify yourself, because at the end of that five years, you might realize like this is as far as this can go and I need to let it go. And if you have totally redefined yourself as like the only thing in your only worth is in this company and then you have to close, like I mean, I watched my dad, you know, fail and he, he 
lost the company after 18 years and has still not recovered 10 years later because it was his whole life. And it's like, that's a really scary situation to be in, right? Because we're all more than this thing that we've created, but it's really easy to forget mm. that. Oh, yeah. and, and so, you know, you got to kind of always remind yourself in the back of your mind that, like, you could just fail this thing, too, and it's okay. <laughs> like, that's how we learn. <laughs> yeah. Do a crush, pick yourself up. Oh. And, uh, I think I forgot. <laughs> but it'll come back to me. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I know that with startups, you have to, well, first you're driven by a passion and what you want to do. Uh, but then you have to learn like business and marketing and all that kind of stuff. So how did you go about like um, stepping into all those different things that you needed to know as a founder? Uh, a lot of it is by uh, screwing up three or four times yep. first. <laughs> uh, that's not the best solution. <laughs> Uh, I'm just a, a compulsive reader and I'm constantly reading books. I'm identifying areas where I'm weakest and finding the books that are most highly recommended in that area to sort of shore up you know, where I'm feeling as a, as a leader, as a, an, an entrepreneur. Uh, so if I'm in the car, I'm listening to audiobooks. If I'm at the gym, I'm listening to audiobooks. I fall asleep listening to audiobooks. Uh, so that's been huge for me. Uh, find a mentor or two yeah, who have hard. done something like this before successfully. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> you, you know, find somebody who has has a passion for, for what you're doing and also has a passion for uh, helping the next generation grow. Uh, because you know there are people out there who have done it, sold their business, now they consult or they're semi-retired, but they love to just share their knowledge. And there are a couple, you know, older guys that I still reach out to and have lunch or coffee or, uh, you know, cocktails with um, every month or two. And I say, you know, here's what's going on in my world. Did you, did you ever run into this? And he's like, oh, let me tell you a story. <laughs> you know, oh, shit. <laughs> uh, you know, so they, they love to share, um, you know, and, and uh, I, I mentor uh, a couple, couple guys right now that are high school going on to college and, you know, they, they love to code and they love to, you know, love the idea of startups and I'm like, I've got, a, I've got this list, I've got this notebook of ideas that, that Marcus just mentioned, uh, Matthew, sorry, uh, and I'm like, I don't have time to actually put this together. Uh, so, like, hey, let's work on this together, and, you know, so I'm mentoring him, I'm, you know, giving him ideas to work on, coaching him, uh, and it's, it's really fulfilling for somebody to, you know, to pass that knowledge on, so definitely find a mentor. Knowledge is the key. Now, the average CEO in America reads over 60 books a year. The average American reads less than one. That's all I do if I'm not listening. I start every day off with about an hour of just motivational videos. I'm listening to them while I'm at the gym. I meditate and get my mindset in the right place to go forward each day. Uh, mentors, I've got four or five of them that I go to constantly. Uh, we, were, we were fortunate enough with our company, we got accepted into Betablocks. After about six months in business, we got into that. And that really gave us the roadmap into lean methodology, but we were, we were a little further ahead than most companies that enter the program. They, most of them just have an idea, and we actually had something making money, but that we learned a lot of what we were doing in there, enough to be dangerous, and then it was trial and error, and don't do that again, don't you screw up, and just keep, keep learning every day. You're not going to learn until you make mistakes. I'm a blog and podcast person, um, and so I have just found, and there's a couple of people, you know, who are in the industry that they, you know, they're making a lot of noise and they're doing a thing, and it's like, I want to kind of be them, right? Or I've identified companies that are not even in my market that I'm like, but I want to be able to do what you're doing, right? So, and these spices is a great example of, even though they're not at all in marketing, but the owner is like, he's not afraid to speak his mind, he knows exactly what his audience will and will not tolerate, he's to you know, compromise 
certain, he's willing to compromise income for integrity, um, and it's all those things, and it's like, well, to get there, though, you have to have a strong enough foundation that you're not gonna crumble, you know, if 80% of your customers don't agree with you, or you know, whatever, right? 18% doesn't even matter. Um, so yeah, I've, I've definitely, just a lot of, of, of blogs, podcasts, gathering links of people who are technically competitors, looking at what they're doing, that sort of evaluation. Um, and then a lot of my clients tend to have someone, so like I had a company recently that had a senior marketing consultant guy used to be the VP of Enterprise Rentals out in St. Louis on the team. And I was hired to be like the marketing strategy person and I was like, I'm not sure I know more than that guy, but okay. And I just called him up one day, completely not related to the project, and I was like, hey, this is a cool opportunity. I'm a little in over my head. Can we like just talk person to person real quick? And I just asked him. Um, you know, and then, like I wasn't, I couldn't pretend to be an expert in that company. And I was like, I still have ideas and I have value, but like I just asked, you know, and he was like, Yeah. I mean he was surprised, but at the same time, like we had a really good conversation and you know, and I learned some stuff and, and kinda had some of my thoughts vetted based on his experience. Yeah, because at the end of the day, someone who's in their 50s and 60s, who's been in business as long as we've been alive in some instances, like, they're just going to know more, right? They just have an edge on you that you don't. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty, not pretty weak as well, I have to ask those <laughs> I would, just real quick, because I can't help myself, um, <laughs> I would say Al Gore invented this thing called the Internet. <laughs> Again, you can Google it, so much information on you how to market your internet. startup, how to do accounting, all these cool services have for free, at least trial-wise, awesome, really easy. Um, the other thing was, uh, oh, the community. So, and I was gonna mention, say this at the last, but you guys are already plugged into startups, I mean, you're working for some cool ones, uh, you're obviously in school, but man, there, Kansas City has an awesome startup community, right, entrepreneurs like this, and so many more. Make sure you plug into it. When you leave this room, when you're done with your internship, this program, whatever, you have the option of just going back to school and saying, that was a fun thing, I'm done with it now, or whatever. But you also have the option to say, I'm gonna keep staying involved, right? I'm gonna continue to build my network, and you're gonna meet people who can say, oh, that's a cool idea you're working on. Well, if you ever need marketing help, that's what I do, so just hit me up, boom, you just made an awesome contact when you need that help. So yeah. make sure you stay plugged in. Again, as I mentioned, this space, free for students. Come on in, pull up a chair, work. There's other places to hang out. So many cool people, man. And Kansas City's a great place that they want to help. I mean, everyone's just yeah. like, you know, so, so hospitable. And just like, we're all kind of in the same situation. We're all new at this, right, yeah. in a lot of ways. And so, like, yeah, that's, you know, look at this stuff, right? I mean, yeah, we all have a chip on our shoulder because we're in the Midwest and heck with the West Coast. We are here and we're going to support one another. Exactly. And when Bloom and I verify and every success we have out of this community, just gives us that little more exactly. fire to keep pushing forward because we can do it too. And there's power in saying, can I buy you a coffee? Yeah. A coffee costs, what, four or five bucks? The value you get from someone is saying, can I buy you a coffee will be a gazillion times more than that coffee's cost. Mm -hmm. And no one says no, especially the students. Right. You could probably call up Sandy Kemper and say, can we get a coffee? He might say yes. Right. <laughs> you know? I know you can tweet Rick Usher and be like, I got 12 minutes, all right. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Everyone <laughs> wants to support one another, especially the next generation. So use that to your advantage. And you had a question here, Mr. Bloom. Oh, Mr. Bloom, that's me. Uh, quick question. What are some must-read or must-check-out podcasts, books, sites that you guys use? I don't know. I'm not old. I got that. One book that I go back to every two, three years just in terms of you know, being a leader and growing a team successful business owner is Entree Leadership uh, by Dave Ramsey. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm going through it again right now just on uh, managing the, the hiring process and getting it right so that you don't waste your time bringing somebody in and, and then, you know, six weeks later you're like, man, that's not a fit at all. Um, so that's, that's kind of high on my list right now. Um, 10X by Grant Cardone. If you haven't read it, listen to it. Definitely do it. It'll put a fire in your ass yes. to get you going. <laughs> um, there's another book. I can't remember the author, No Excuses. Mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, books like that 
will not necessarily teach you the steps to build your company, but they're going to teach you the principles and the mindset that you have to have to actually do this. And once you stop looking at everything from tippy toes and you just start diving in and get it done and commit yourself, then that's that's all it takes is just committing. And uh, those are two. Anything by Grant Cardone? And then that no excuses were well. both very awesome. I have to think. So I listen to Planet Money a lot. Um, not necessarily because I'm learning stuff about business, but just like being aware of kind of what's going on economically, financially in the world. And, and I have found that that helps short because I suck at that, right? I suck at economics and that sort of thing. And it's a way for me to stay plugged in and connected. And, and, um, and then
use to go into the community and actually listen to people? Like, how do we actually listen to the community? Show up. You can just be there. Go to, I mean, happy hours are obviously like at my jam, but like when you don't, well, you can do that, right? But I mean, there are lots of, like, just listen to what people are pitching about stuff that's not working. Ask yourself, what's the other side of that? Like, why, what is the complaint coming from? Like, is it them, right? So maybe, I mean, sometimes personality problems, but sometimes it's process-based, right? Or it's it's a system that's inefficient, or it's like, you could really, you know, and, and I mean, that's how, um, oh, my brain is dead today. The guy that got the $50,000, the launch TV thing that had the shipping issue. Uh, right, I can see him. Wait, what were they shipping? So he, you know, he's like fixing the, like, so trucks that carry stuff around and like have this oh, check-in sorry. process, huh? Back. Yeah. Um, Super yeah. Like, he's one of those where it's like, that's a really weird industry to go innovate in, that no one had listened to them when they were complaining about this really inefficient process. Right, and he was yeah, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. And he's like, why is this still happening? And it's like, just because he had bothered to ask the question, why is this still happening? And they were like, holy crap, you got an answer for me? Because we want it. Um, and so I think that that's part of it is just like, listening to what people are kind of complaining about, right? Or like, that thing that always seems to, and if you find yourself doing the same thing over and over again, ask yourself why why am I not arguing this? Why is this not more efficient? Why is this not better? Like why are we still arguing about global web design? Why is it still a thing? So I, I hate to give this advice in the Kansas City startup village, but uh, get a job. Yeah. And you will find the inefficiencies. Yeah. You will find <laughs> the problems. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So we'll see it. I mean, you know. Get experience, see how things work in the real world. So either get a job in a field that really interests you and, and look for problems, or uh, get a job in a field that touches a lot of industries to see which ones you're like, wow, that's exciting. So that could be done in you know in a software company that or a you know a digital company that works in a lot of industries because you're going to get a lot of exposure to different things. You're going to meet a lot of people that are. Every, everything from CEOs to you know the junior marketing under secretary of right. yeah, uh, <laughs> and, and you'll you'll find something eventually that that really captures your your attention. You have to have in the back of your mind why 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 am I doing this? What's the underlying? Like what's like just asking the question every yeah. time you are encountered. Matthew said, write down. Just be writing down ideas because if not, there's no magic pill. To be can't just be like, oh, I'm gonna solve this problem or solve that problem. I can't think who the name of it, uh, the guy is. He, uh, he came to Betablock's mentor lecture and he had sold his first company for a substantial amount of millions of dollars. He's here in Kansas City. What's uh, where? Who? Oh, that's the owner. That's the owner. That's the owner. Uh, but him and a bunch of other people all pooled their money together and they had a, like a list of a hundred different ideas on how they could solve, make this better, this better, and they just started, they'd pump X amount of money and X amount of time into each, every idea, and they just kept going one at another, after another, crossing off the list. Didn't work, move on to the next one. They got down to like the second to last one, and they blew up on it, all because they developed a software system for managing storage rental units and focused on a college I think they went to Austin first and focused on college towns and developed a programming system to keep inventory on all the rental storage units and next thing you know, you know nationwide blew really up I can't think of the, okay. his name I, I'm friends with him on Facebook and LinkedIn <laughs> that's why you don't have to know his name anymore you just look at yeah. the phone. But no, it's, I mean, but they, they went through like a hundred ideas of, oh, we can make this better, and they tried it, and put money into it, and had some really smart people. They couldn't figure out, couldn't find that niche, and it wasn't until about the last idea they had that it just, the magic happened. So you just gotta keep going and going, and failing and failing until the light bulb comes on. I'll give you a funny example of kind of that thing. Like we're standing in the kitchen the other night, We've been joking, like, we, there was, it was an idea that my boyfriend had, and I think it's a good idea. There's stuff like it on the market, I don't care if there's not stuff like this on the market here. Um, and we're not using it, so 
there's still room, right? But it's kind of been back burnered, and we are working on this concussion sensor, and uh, and we're standing in the kitchen, and I was like, how is this ultimately not that that thing that we were talking about, right? Which is essentially it's 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 a way to manage not storage units, but like small equipment and who's got what and and repairs and all this kind of stuff, right? Through a phone app and being able to like tie that you know together, and it's like how is this not all driving back towards that initial idea that you didn't think was going to go anywhere? How on earth do you get from a concussion sensor relating that back to at its core something that's meant to help like landscapers? Because you had the idea to begin with, <laughs> and you start looking at things from that ten thousand foot view and being like, you know what? Really, this isn't a whole lot different. We need our ID technology. We need an app. We need a thing. We need to have this data transfer. Like we've already got the bones built of an answer. You just got to tweak this and this and this in the user interface, and now maybe we can have a solution, right? That's actually going to go somewhere. It was just like absurd. <laughs> I think to answer that question, how do you know if there's a demand for whatever it is? Just so just ask. Just start mm -hmm. talking to people. Trust me, nobody is going to steal yeah, your idea. Get over the idea of an NDA. Nobody just is taking <laughs> your idea. We all have our own shit that we're working we're all 100 good. hours a week at. If we think it's cool, we're going to tell you that's a cool idea. The last thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to carve away 40 extra hours in my week and steal your idea. Guy's idea. No, no you, that's where you get acquired. You, don't worry about anybody stealing it. Go out, build some kind of prototype of whatever it is, and and put it out there. Take it to the people who you think will potentially buy it. Take mm -hmm. the idea and say, hey, if, if this was a thing, would you pay money for that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody's that stealing that. Companies yeah. want you to build it for them. Right. They don't it's want cheaper it. for them to buy it from you than to research and develop it for 10 years and have it not work. So yeah, just throw out ideas. And, and in your question, I, was, I like uh, Larissa's answer, which is like, just show up. Like, that's what you started with. Yeah. Um, and there's a mentality, I think, that works really well, which is this give first, get later mentality. Um, show up, and if you're talking to someone and you're intrigued by whatever they're working on, say, can I help you? Is there any way I can help you? It will pay such dividends, because they're going to remember, whoa, this is cool. And then down the line, when they need someone or whatever, you're going to pop front of mind and ref refer you know, referrals, references, friends. It's just, it's a great way to, to be just in general. And be useful. Yeah. Just be helpful, right? Be willing to do the thing. So. Yeah. So just for the sake of time, because I know you, thank you for carving out for you. Well, I'm talking. I, I love that Joey <laughs> got us in here for this. Um, so yeah, have a round of applause. For <laughs> Yeah, I mean, maybe we'll stick around for we'll the answer questions, but we appreciate you guys uh, coming out and being a part of this thing. Just some uh, wrap up stuff. So I mentioned Start from the News. Definitely check it out, subscribe. Um, oh, we have this thing called the Hitchhiker's Guide. So some of the things we talked about, like community things that are available, um, it's on our website. It's also on the Start from the News website. So just check it out. It's really simple. Um, and then go to events, like we talked about being plugged in the community. Uh, there's a couple of events calendars, KC Source Link, and then Ford KC. Make sure you're looking at those. If something pops up, you know, on your calendar, show up, have a good time, enjoy. Cool. Thank you all. This is fun. Uh, how about a quick picture with the, uh, with the panelists?